Welcome to our SEAM studio here in the heart of the Free State in Bloemfontein. This channel serves to bring you only the best in aviation safety. Join me now as we cross over to one of our aviation experts, Charlie Murray. Welcome again to the SEAM studio and this time it's the third presentation and there are five. We're busy with stalling and today specifically I'm going to have a look at maneuver stalling speed. What is it what is maneuver stalling speed I mean let's derive it and let's do it properly so it's just a little bit of a revision first basic stalling speed remember lift equals coefficient of lift half rho v squared s this is the one that you should engrave don't don't make a tattoo now okay but the lift formula is really the basis from where we work out a lot of stuff and if you really understand that you can really operate your aircraft and later on we're going to see how do we operate it inside its operating envelope all right <clears throat> good on here we can see that we've actually got two basic formulas the first one is just V that we derived from there and and that was a straightforward deduction as we've seen before so velocity equals lift but now we said if we wanted to use that stalling speed and we want to couple it to when the aircraft cannot longer support its own weight in other words lift must be equal to weight and when lift cannot be equal to weight that's where the wings cannot carry the aircraft anymore that point at 1g is what we were interested in and that is the speed that you will see here and that's why we put on the weight Right, so here we've got actually two formulas. This formula has got a variable in lift. This one has got a non-variable in weight. So basic storage thing, we said this Vs is the weight. We've done that. We said that weight is a constant and it's used in the basic stalling speed. Now as load factor is one it's one because lift equals weight now when is lift equals weight only when there's no accelerations when there's no G's that you're pulling there's no load there's no in all right so the moment that you start loading then we're talking about maneuvering and that will be then maneuvering stalling speed and now we can do something we're now actually going to take this V and because there's a variable lift, we're going to call it VM or V maneuvering. Remember that in basic stalling speed, lift will always be equal to weight un until it cannot be, and, and that's where you get your basic stalling speed. But maneuvering stalling speed is very, very dependent on how many G's you pull. And you're going to say to me, but then the weight increases. Mm -mm, the weight is not increasing. It is the apparent weight increasing. What is actually increasing is the lift. Let's take um, if we're doing uh, a steep turn. Now <clears throat> I normally ask and I say a turn is that a roll, a pitch or a yaw? So okay take the yaw a little bit out because it's going to balance the aircraft but between the two other primaries is it is the turn is that a roll or a pitch? So just look at that and then I'm going to leave you with that. As we want, let's say we want to do a steep turn. As we roll in, this is the roll, we stop the roll, and then we are pitching. Hmm. The lift vector is seriously tilted, and the vertical component of the lift vector must now, well, it, it will become less because the lift vector is tilted and it's got to go way beyond, so that actually, if you vectorize correctly, then the vertical component of lift will be the same as weight and therefore there will be an increase in apparent weight but it's not really the weight it's the lift that increases that's all that I wanted you to just pay a little bit of attention to this stage note that the strength of L depends on the maneuver maneuvering and it's a variable the lift over weight now changes with load factor which is your N and we talk about a G, all right, those are uh, basically the same. 
Remember I said before, the one is a scalar and the one is a vector. Don't worry about that. Not important now. We can freely talk about the g's at this moment in time. But remember, if, if we're using that n is the same as a g, we're talking about lift over weight. And the moment you start maneuvering, the lift will increase. Weight, well, it, unless you do air to area fueling, and we're not into that game for now, unless you are throwing some parabats out, whatever, this is not what we're talking about here. All right, so W stays the same, and it is apparent weight, that one, that increases. That actually makes this whole uh, exploiting of the lift formulas a little bit easier because we've now got two formulas. The one is a constant with a weight and the one is a variable with a lift. So now we're going to play these two off against each other. This you can immediately cancel out but because they're the same. So if you take V S, you move it to the bottom, square root of lift and weight to the bottom, there you go. Now note N or your G equals lift over weight that I've said before. Therefore, maneuvering stalling speed, that one, sorry, maneuvering stalling speed equals the basic stalling speed multiplied by the square root of the load or the G's. Keep that one in mind. Now, what is the implications now of this formula? So let's just put a couple of things to it. I've, I've just used for ease 50 knots as your basic stalling speed, in other words, the Vs. And I said we tall it, the load factor is 4 or 4 Gs that we're pulling. And Vm, maneuver stalling speed, equals the basic stalling speed 50 times the square root of 4 is 2, and therefore it's 100 knots. Mm. So now all of a sudden you see that as the speed increases, and you start hard maneuvering with the aircraft, what you're actually doing is you are increasing the stalling speed of the aircraft. So now if you come and you do a quite a serious uh, bank at low speed and pull up to impress your buddies, well, she can stall. In aerobatics, this, this is the first stuff that we actually teach the people. And, and this is what we, we have to face, but you know, once you make a mistake. But remember, we always start off with height. So that there's place to recover, but after takeoff, mm, not much, not much height, not not much space to recover in. Another one. Let's say we're doing a, a constant 60 degree bank, and we and, and we did this where I said, remember, we're flying straight and level. Okay, let me do it this way, and I'm going to roll it into 60 degrees, and then I'm going to pitch. If you are continually maintaining 60 degrees bank, and that we will later on do with turning where I'll show you how to work it out. But there, if it's a constant 60 degrees bank and you maintain your height, you find you have to pull back quite considerably and then the, the G's that you pull will be two. In other words, you're going to weigh twice your weight. But I just said your weight can't increase. That's what it's going to feel like, all right? So don't worry, don't go on a, if you want to die, just release the load. It's as easy as that. Okay. So if it's 2G, so I just quickly had to work out the square root of 2 is 1.44. So the maneuver storing speed in a steep turn in this very specific aircraft that I'm using is 71 knots. In other words, from normal straight turn level, going into a steep turn and maintaining a 2G turn, all of a sudden, the storing speed has gone up, right? the storing speed has gone up from 50 knots to 71 knot. That is what you really need to understand. All right, so what is the implication of the D, uh, of your G applications? As G increases, the maneuver stalling speed is increased. Therefore, the G decreases. Ah, look here, if it decreases, then it decreases. If you, for instance, fire, take um, VM equals VB, and we used 50, and you're pulling zero Gs, then Vm equals zero. And you, yeah, it's going to momentarily, all right? But uh, theoretically not stalled. So when we do aerobatics, we actually exploit this. Um, you know, when we used to do the Harvard aerobatic formation, 
Hey, the Harvard stalls around about 67 knots odd. And we were three in a three ship. And as you go in for the loop and you go over the top, there is no way there was enough energy to get 70 knots at the top outside to ensure that you're not going to stall. At best, we would have 45, 50. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, you would have 55 knots. But why didn't we fall out and tumble out and flick out and all that? Simply because this is what we've done. We would just, and when I was the lead, I understood this very well. So I just would release, release the load, release the load. When you release the load, then you will find the square root of 0.5 is 0.7. And all of a sudden, it goes down from 50 to 36 at half a G. It's not something you really want to use if you're not doing aerobatics and stuff like that, but it's something that you really need to know. If you're in trouble, you've got to unload. A lot of people say, push the nose forward. And I say, why must you push the nose forward? No, we want to push the nose forward to reduce the angle of attack. Yes, it will reduce the angle of attack. I agree. But that's not the main thing. You, we always talk about it and we say, you need to unload the aircraft, which means you can retain, regain or you can maintain control at a lower um, speed. That is the whole trick. All right. So, as a load of uh, G result in a specific stalling speed, all other race between lift and weight will end up at different maneuvering stalling speed. So, maneuvering stalling speed will really depend on what you're doing and how violently you're doing and how fast you're going and all that kind of stuff. Whereas basic stalling speed, straight and level, engine throttle back, aircraft can no longer maintain, straight and level. But now we need to conclude. And you know, to do a high G pull up increases the stalling speed of the aircraft and surprised many pipe people. In, in South Africa, it's the main thing. Everybody goes for a breakfast run. Yeah, I know we used to do it on the motorbikes, but we do it in our aircraft. Then we fly into a specific place, all the buddies get together, and then afterwards when we leave, man, we're going to give them a shoot up. Okay, and then we're going to come and go fast and we're going to pull as hard as we can or we're going to go slow and bank so that they can see, let me put it to your way, the plan form of the aircraft, how beautiful your aircraft is and they're going to pull it and they're going to flick and tragedy. Why? Well, because nobody taught them. Nobody taught them. Why not? Well, you know, this is where you really have to take care because, you know, this will always lead to disaster. If the flick out of the maneuvers at a low level, you, you're in trouble. So how do we do shoot-ups? Because, I mean, come on, you're going to say to me, but Charlie, I'm going to do a shoot-up. I want to do a shoot -up. I want my 15 seconds of fame. All right? But there's a couple of things to the 15 seconds of fame. And in the fifth presentation, I will going to show you what the VN, or the velocity low diagram, looks like for any aircraft. And you can go and work it out. And if you stay within the green, the, the flight envelope, and you don't exceed it, you've got a damn fine chance. Ah, by the way, science out there does not care much about you. Sorry to say that. Get off your high horse. <laughs> it cares nothing about you. The aircraft that you fly cares zip about you. It doesn't care whether it's in one piece, a mangled piece, or what, and who goes with it. All right. Aircraft cannot have respect for you. And how do you show respect? Well, the only way that you can show respect is by knowledge. Do I have the knowledge? And this is why I'm doing this. Next, have I got the skills to apply the knowledge? Because a lot of people say, yeah, I, I, we've talked about a spin a lot, and I know exactly how to recover from a spin. Really? I put you in a spin and I say recover, you're going to have a freeze up somewhere along the line. Why? Because you've never been exposed to it. Book knowledge is not the only knowledge. I agree, the foundation is knowledge. And that you get in books from other people. But you must get super training. If your instructor is scared of showing you advanced stalling and the problems with stalling, obviously at altitude, if he's scared to do that, find somebody that is not scared. Instructors, if you've never been taught, there, there's no shame in not knowing if you, if you weren't taught. Shame on the person that taught you. 
But now that you know that you do not know, it's your responsibility to get to know. Right? That's the end. This was then the third in the fifth delivery. Take care. We hope you enjoyed that aviation snippet with Charlie Murray. Please make sure to visit our website www.aviationauditing.co.za, follow us on both Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel under Seams Studio.